lunch break. Here we are. Man, Adrian, you're doing push-ups. You're trying to look yeah. like Steve here, huh? Trying to get look all, up for the show. Get all <laughs> swole up. I got an inferiority complex, Steve. You're bringing some meat to our show, some muscle, huh? Black is thinning. Uh, <laughs> Camera adds 30 pounds. They don't need to add 30 pounds to you, brother friend. So, hey, we're so glad you tuned in to lunch break today. We hope you will share us, like us. We're not proud about that, are we, Adrian? Yes, hey. Yeah. Hey, go and like our page. And hey, tell us if you want Adrian to write another eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> Straight, right? Adrian yeah. Adrian just finished a 12-hour time trial. Oh, yeah. This we, is a suffer fest. We gave you a um, shout-out, I think, last week. And congratulations. You weren't, on the, uh, you weren't on planet Earth last time I saw you. No. Yeah, he was... We, we should make Adrian do a, like a ride-a-thon, and everybody donates $100 to <laughs> ride future hour. <laughs> That'd be a fundraiser for the show, huh? Oh, yeah. I like it. So Steve and I know how to diet for shows. We get a little crazy, don't we, in the head? <laughs> What head? No <laughs> <laughs> I know, because Adrian uh, gets that way. So we're glad you showed up today, but we're looking for 700 on our like. We're at 650 something, I think. So we keep crawling up there. We're glad you're out there. We've got a great show today. We want to thank Encourage Media for producing this. We want to thank our on site director, Seth Parker, and our producer, Mike Harvey. They're both here. If you want to see what they look like, they'll be on the show today. I think they got. Who gave them a camera? I don't know. Was that Could a mistake? Be trouble. <laughs> Could be trouble. You never know. So we are here today. We're glad you're here, and uh, we also want to thank our creative consultants, Tessa and Taylor Touchstone. Adrian's my co-host today. You've been a guest Ooh. on our show, and uh, we're talking about uh, lunch break season two, two point oh. A lot of changes coming. Going to have a lot of guest co-hosts this year. And with that, uh, a lot of our guest co-hosts are going to be bringing guests. So really excited about yeah. that happening in our show. And I know Mike Harvey and Seth Parker are going to be sitting on this side of the table. And uh, it'll be fun. I think, Mike Harvey, you have, a, you have an announcement for our Facebook group. It includes our, do we catch you eating or snoozing, Mike? <laughs> no, just. <laughs> Carl, I'm doing both. Uh -huh. Doing both, yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, we're going to be doing a Facebook group specifically for the viewers of actually all of the Encourage Media shows. Yeah. So um, we have some more new shows coming out. We have some stuff Tom's awesome. doing behind the scenes yep. and TikTok stuff. Yeah. And um, we're going to have some exclusive content in there for all of the group members and some cool things, some cool ways that they can support the ministries that are really driving everything we're doing here at Encourage Media and Lunch Break and all the other shows. If you're watching online and you see Mike on this screen right here, uh, he looks like the, the neighbor from Home Improvement because all you can see is his eyes poking <laughs> over the TV monitor. <laughs> so true. Hey, hey, Seth, you want to go ahead and tell him that um, we had a little glitch before we started oh, yeah. the show? So uh, we actually uh, were experiencing a little bit of a technical difficulty. We had a black frame for a little bit. And then also we had to uh, restart uh, our system. Um, but... Uh, we're good to go, 100%. You guys always awesome. do it. We're so appreciative of our uh, media crew and our tech crew. So glad to hear from them. And uh, I am on TikTok. Man, I never thought I'd be on TikTok, but I get TikTok. And I'm doing a daily devotional, kind of a, it's called a morning pump. Steve and I go to the workout and we just get the pump going on. And so we're calling it a morning pump. So check it out on TikTok. It's Tom Touchstone. On TikTok, we're going to include it into uh, one of our products with Encourage Media. That, that's a great name. I like that name, Morning Pump. Ah, you did because you, you at church uh, last week for some reason they thought a need to announce that I was doing it. And you, and you ever start doing something and you're not ready to do it, and they were announcing it, so people were like following my TikTok and yeah. they're announcing it. And I was like, what do we do this for? It's good stuff, though. You wake up in the morning and you really do get pumped about it. Yeah, so it's it's a, it, it is. So we're, do, we're dropping some new shows. So our um, question from the audience as we start our show here today it, that came from John L. Uh, last week, our show with John L. Ward. And we talked about Kicks for Kids. It's an amazing opportunity for you to get involved with um, foster kids and john l's got a great thing with kicks for kids but john l ex explained this and i didn't know this about what you know john l's a uh, uh, vision that three days in a row he got woken up uh, um by he the spirit he you know this is his story i'm not you know i'm not sharing it for him it's what he said at 303 a.m 
three days in a row, he got woken up, and in this dream, he saw a pair of shoes, food, people, and colors, and he didn't know wow. what to do with it. He kept bugging his wife. I know how that is. My wife will tell you that. I'm like, what does this mean? Yeah. And so uh, John L. just started thinking that the God was you know, putting into him the Kick for Kids vision. And so our question came in in many ways from our audience, and, and really it was, to sum them all up, what is your, a spiritual guidance from the Lord in these kind of things? And I can jump right in because I've had one spiritual vision. And it was of my daughter, Taylor. And I tell a lot of, uh, there was a thing called Promise Keepers when I was first saved. Big men's ministry movement over um, the nation. And uh, I, I was, dry, I was uh, in a bus going to LAX to go to Boulder, Colorado. And it was my friend, Raul Castaneda. And I went to sleep. And then I had a kind of a dream vision of my daughter, Tessa Taylor, being born. And it was a girl. Now, my wife and I um, um, were married at the time, but not pregnant. And so when we became pregnant, I'm just like, oh, it's a girl. I saw her. And then my dad started having a beef with me because he was he kind of antagonistic because he didn't know the Lord then. He was just kind of like poking me, yeah. kind of like our guys earlier, you know. And so basically, you know, my dad was always buy something pink at a baby shower. And the last baby shower, my wife goes, hey, could you and your dad just like cool this thing? Because, it's, uh, you know, it's obnoxious. You know, he's saying you're going to have a, a boy and you're saying we're going to have a girl. I go, I really believe this. So if he buys something blue, I got to have him take it back. And it got to be his thing with my dad. And I, so when my daughter was born and it was a girl, you know, I kind of, you know, made a big deal out of it. And uh, when my dad did get saved nine years later, he talked about what an impact that was, that I stood on that. And I felt that that was, you know, part, it wasn't just to find out she was a girl. It was part of my dad's um, just journey and, um, you know, knowing the Lord, realizing that I was standing on it strong enough to, you know, challenge him on it. So. And that's kind of like the hardest part is, you know, you get the vision and then standing on it yeah. after you get it, after yeah. you take it in. Yeah. It right. is. How about you, Adrian? You anything to jump in you on? You know, with? I would just say what happened most recent. You know, I was sitting at a doctor's office, and God tells me you're in danger. I remember this so, one. So I look at my wife like, "Are you packing a gun?" I mean, what's going on? Like, am I in danger from you? I mean, is the doctor going to come in and give me a shot in the head or something? I don't know. But I, I really, I didn't get to find out what it was until actually a couple days later. And it scared me. I was still scared until this morning. You I called said, me. Yeah, I called. Yeah. I called. Tom. He goes, "Am I in danger?" And I go, oh, "I don't know." <laughs> yeah. And I really felt like I was in danger. And then this morning, I kind of, I was very careful for the last couple of days just to see, because you never know what that means yeah. until today. This morning, I got the peace about it, and I was reading my devotions. And in the devotions, it just it stopped me in my tracks. It was the only red lettering in the chapter. So it was perfect. It says, "Do not be afraid any longer." I was like, wow, awesome. I was like, that's it. That's all I needed to hear, God. You know, but just following it. Just kept following it. That's it. It is. How about you, Steve? I, you know, as we were talking the other night in the production meeting, you talked about, I thought it was a very spiritual moment when you talked about how God uses things in your life like bumper cars. You know what? Um, God's been very good to me. I have no complaints from the Lord. Uh, we'll start with, um, yeah, there's a lot of things he's done. We'll start with the song. I told you guys about the song. Uh, I was yeah. cleaning my room. This is in my early 30s. I'm still finding my way. I just stopped my bad stuff I was doing. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> just, has that. I just stopped trying to stop living that life, and I started getting more and more, more towards him. But I was cleaning my room, and I know I put on the rap song. I know I put on the rap station. I know I put the numbers in. I know it, what I put on. I was ready to clean my room. It went to the Christian R&B station. That's not what I put in. <laughs> so, not sure that's what I want to listen to, right? It's like <laughs> something said, just be still. All right. Wow. And so the song that was playing, nothing. I don't mean nothing to me. Once again, it said, be still. Right. Like I said, I'm just thinking it's my head. The next song that came in has been my mantra ever since. It was. Uh, so it's a song still that you kind of consider it like. It's my mantra. I love that. Because I have control issues. Wow. So I like to control things. So if you're walking in in the ninth inning, that'd be your walk up song in and baseball. It would bump you up, but it would definitely be the song I'd be sitting there going. And it was called Let Go and Let God. Wow. wow. It, 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 like, 
I have control issues, and it's just from my, you know, from being a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. um, everything is A, B, C, D, one, two, three. I'm not eating nothing but what I'm supposed to eat in the very quantity I'm supposed to eat it in. Very, I'm getting up in the morning. I'm going to pop a pill, some sort of energy pill, wait for it to kick in, and I'm on my Stairmaster. Yep. It, mm. it, it Regiment. On point. So I have control issues. And that song right there, Let Go and Let God, I was like, you sure, you sure? I don't really want to let it go. <laughs> yeah. And I sat back, and that was the start of my change and my closeness with God. I love that. When I just relaxed. And I it wasn't it. just the song. It was the word, those words. Because yes. you keep saying it. Yes. Let go, let God. It, it, like it's, I kid you not, it's my mantra. Whenever I get in bad situations, it's on my playlist. I will go put it on. I'm like, stop That's it. Awesome. Stop it. He's, he's taking care of us. And right. he does do that, too, Steve. I mean, as you're out there in the audience, I mean, sometimes, like, you can't call that a coincidence. I mean, you put on a different song, and you got that song, and it's become your life mantra. How long? How many years has that been there, Steve? I say I was 33, 34. I'm 50 well, now. Wow. You were 34. That's when I got saved, Steve. Ah, that's, like I said, it was... Yeah. It's kind of, kind, of, kind of, you know, it just does. I mean, I always, God and I, God knows the wrestling match I've had with him all those years. Like, why not 16? Why 34? Yeah. And I've just settled that, that, hey, I had a lot of stuff to, you know, get done before God said you're okay to use now. Got to um, do some childish things. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do. Yeah. I like it. Steve, uh, you also, uh, um, well, maybe we'll get to that story. You wanted to talk about the bouncer story before now, or you want to get into it when we get a little farther down your story? It's up to you. I mean, um, it can fall right in off the um, the song. Ah, uh, okay. God, God is God is God has spoken to me several several different times, and it's like verbally, like, hey. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, isn't it amazing as we grow in the Lord, God speaks to everybody differently. Because I hear Him like this too. I, you know, I, I you know I, I'm like, who's talking? I do. Yeah. That's just you know, I tell people that I hear Him through Scripture, hear Him through sermons. But sometimes it's like, I was, stop it. Like I said, I was watching, a, I told you guys, I was watching a minister on television and he was, he was speaking in tongues and I'm looking for a shirt, ready to go about my day. And I heard distinctly, I love you. And I went, Ooh. I'm got some problems going on this morning. <laughs> Who's in my house? And I'm like, eh, brain talking to me. And I went right back in and it distinctly said again, I said, I love you. Wow. And I broke down. I started crying. Now, Steve, is that sometimes hard for men to receive an I love you? Especially guarded men, and I openly yes. admit I'm guarded. Uh, That's me too. I yes. openly admit I'm <laughs> you said guarded. That. I, you told me that one time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, but hearing your father tell you he loves you, mm. it, it was just like that moment. It's, I mean, I'm right now. It, you can, I can feel like, okay, don't cry on, 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 <laughs> yeah. on this right now. It's all right to cry, man. But <laughs> that right there was like, oh, wow, I'm okay. Yeah. I mean, it was an okay moment. Yeah. Um, we can fast forward to the bouncing. I bounced from the time I was 18 till about 47. Um, caused a lot of my anger issues, caused a lot of my troubles. Well, well you were built for it. Yeah, that's a little... <laughs> yeah. You definitely got the size for it, man. Well, well, I, 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 I was paid very well. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 far because I knew when you guys when you guys saw Steve today that you know being around big people is sometimes awkward for not big people. It just is, isn't it? I don't it? have that problem. Well, 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 it's just funny because I did bring something today. Steve, I was able, my, my wife, I have one shirt that I used to wear, and I used to fill this out. And wow. when, I, when, I, when, I was, when I was training, I used to fill this out. Holy moly. Read the size of that shirt. It's still actually intact. Infinity large? <laughs> it's 5X. Yes. And I used Five. to fill that shirt out. And I have a picture in another 5X shirt that I had and I think they have a, a shirt. I used to race horses and it's the only thing that kept me um, oh, sane God. was and that's the 5X shirt that I had on and um, when I would ride my horses people would always say hey, they'd honk at me and go hey dude you know, give the horse a break get off <laughs> poor so, horse so I look like I, at one time I looked like this <laughs> I so, remember when I was bodybuilding I had two separate closets yes yes you, <laughs> off season and on season yes you do that oh, so uh, that's the only shirt that I have my wife wears it um as, as a nightgown. <laughs> I was going to say, that's like a nightgown dress for your wife. So, so it is. So, so, so the bouncing I get, you, you have the size and stuff for that. Yeah, and um, I 
God, I, I mean, I've always, I, one of my prayers is always time. I want time, but I've never seemed to have time. That's always my thing. I want more time to spend. I'm getting older. I've got grandkids and I've got nephews and I love them to death and I never have enough time because I'm busy and when I worked at night, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, uh, this traveling preacher, Dan Williams, came in and he was asking me, hey, did you see my video? And I was like, no, I missed it, brother. And he started telling me the video and I was like, okay, and I'm sorry, Dan, but I was like, okay. <laughs> and uh, right as he was talking, the room spun, the voice came right across and said, you're done. And wow. And I leaned back and I go, I'm done done doing what i was like did you think you were gonna die <laughs> adrian got the voice and I, and I distinctly said you're done bouncing and i was like wow oh. obviously you're probably making some money at it because I, th that was my oh, uh, oh. <laughs> sometimes uh, we all have those moments when it's affecting our pocketbook right I, 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 oh, yeah. oh, uh, hey um i got bills <laughs> yeah I, I have an eating problem <laughs> <laughs> yes and that funds it yes and uh, I, 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 I quit. Mm -hmm. I, I, I took two weeks. I, I promised the Lord. I said, I'll quit in two weeks. And the only reason it was two weeks is because I had two of them, the main guys because I ran a couple different nightclubs that were going on vacation. And I said, I won't leave the bar stranded without me. <laughs> but I said, in two weeks, I'm done. And I walked mm -hmm. away. And I haven't missed a meal since. I mean, I actually. Did, did you tell them why you quit? N not really. Okay. Not everybody believes yeah. when you tell them the story. Yes. At the time, I at, at the time the I, I just tore my pec. Ooh, I remember when you tore your pec. And mm -hmm. I used that as a reason why, like, I, I cannot. I, I can't. don't operate as well as I did with the torn pec. And, and, and it was just, you know, I, when I was bigger without a torn pec, God, I've been benching 500 since I was 23 years yeah. old. I could just pick oh, somebody up and just carry them around. And I was like, hey, without the torn pec, I got to start hitting people. We don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was my reason to leave. But everybody I talked to, I t let them understand, no, God told me, hey, you're out. You, everybody's familiar with social media. And there, there's a, there, there, we've got the picture of the little girl holding the teddy bear. And Jesus tells them, hey, give me the bear. And there's a bigger bear behind him. <laughs> right. We don't know that the, he's holding the bigger bear. Yes. It's oh, that's like, a great oh. illustration. And I have increased oh, I not love decreased that. i love that by letting go and i there's times like you know this time of the year is the horrible year for our industry and it's always like oh man my money's getting a little thin but i'm okay he's told me he's loved me mm -hmm. he told me to walk away mm -hmm. and he told me to let go wow. i have no problem what what you want what you've done is I always tell people where God guides, he provides. Amen. You know, he always does that. And you are a great example of each of those steps. So going on, I, 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 I Steve, there again, is I've known you, I've told you, I've wanted to have you on the show for a long time, but his Facebook post shows me something about you. And I love it because sometimes people's Facebook posts aren't really, you know, telling them who they are. But if you put those up, you know, yours, I got to take my glass off. Yours says, I'm, pr I'm a proud father. I love to laugh. Keep my faith in Jesus. Blood washed, heaven bound. You know, it, it's like, I, I, you know, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's a funny story for another day how I was given that nickname. <laughs> oh, really? You can tell it right now as you brought it up. Everybody thinks it was some cool moment. Like, uh, oh, wow, he's Batman. How uh -huh. you get the nickname? You do all this cool thing. It was literally when Michael Keaton's Batman movie came out. I was working a bar, and I was the baby. They did not want to work the middle of the dance floor, so I had to be on a box in the middle of a dance floor. I'd get punched every night, and I was wearing a long sleeve black shirt, long sleeve black pants, and a beanie, and one of my friends went by and said, Batman. I lost my name. <laughs> that was it. You can call Steve a hundred million times. I won't turn around, but if you say Batman, I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's an awesome nickname. There are others that are way worse. Well, I think I think just I think Justin Greer's was Jumbo, wasn't that Justin's? I think I think that was Justin's um, nickname. It was Dumbo, yeah. Dumbo, Dumbo or Jumbo? It was Jumbo. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes, if I'm walking around, somebody says Jumbo. They <laughs> exactly. I'll hear Steve a hundred times. Steve, Steve, Steve. I'm like, mm, ain't me. Batman. Oh, hey, that's me. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I love that. So, Adrian, you have something you always like to ask our guests. In All your right. Home. So we already had um, some pretty interesting ones here. But what is something that nobody knows about you that you can reveal publicly that you and can still keep it PG and still keep it PG <laughs> today, right here at this moment? 
on lunch break. You got asked. You guys said you're going to hit me with this, and I was like, I don't have anything special. We already know you're Batman, so yeah. you can't use that yeah. anymore. But I, I will tell you the biggest chink in my armor. Ooh. Ooh. Every time I've seen you, you've been very gregarious and very open and light. So I mean, that, that is that's for me. I'm like, what the heck? It, it's funny. It's one of the jobs that bumper cars like we talked about this god has bumper card me through my life like nope not that mm. way like the disneyland cars no matter what if you try to turn right it's going to go left <laughs> no, it's got the way. guide rails <laughs> yes. yeah um and it was i've had some really good jobs that didn't pan out so i was in oil fields i was a derrick man skilled derrick man and i got blackballed for six months wow and that was i can't get a job anywhere in the oil fields and that what? was doing the boom that was doing the boom of the late 90s and early 2000s. I wow. could not get a job. And I was like, wow. A friend of mine got me a job working in, of all places, a strip club. And We're, at, not, we're not saying go work in the strip club. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not saying that. That's not from the Lord. <laughs> and, and the weird thing is I, I've even told my mom. I said, I never understood why I worked there. I never understood. Wow. Like, it, in my, early, my late 20s, it worked with me. But as I got older, it didn't work with mm -hmm. me. I moved up from managerial, all kind of blah, blah, blah. I got a job as a DJ. Like, this microphone was put in my face. Oh, Steve, you're a DJ now. And I was like, oh. You can't be shy and be a DJ. I, I had to speak 100 times a night oh, wow. for 10 hours. Wow. 100 times a night. The first, I remember it was little, Nikki Stobal, my closest friend since high school. He's like, all right, Steve, come in. I'll teach you how to do it. I'm like, cool, cool, cool. And he shoved the microphone in my face and walked away. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So the purpose, what my, the, the, the story is, that right there was put, God put me in a position where I had to learn to speak. You had to pull yourself out of your skin. So this whole microphone thing doesn't bother me because for 10 years. <laughs> you had to. I had to. I love that. Wow. Not that you had to do it in a strip club, but you still had to do it. I, I've worked the Olympias. I've, I've worked these booths. I've done all these things. I mean, if you go past... The TikTok, the Instagram, the the Facebooks on the for the stores, people yeah. are always like, "Hey!" And I'm like, it falls back for me having to figure out how to generate revenue. You know, and, and, and can't you say if you're out there in the audience right now, sometime God puts you in circumstances to overcome a fear that He wants to be able to use you with later on down the road. Amen. Oh, I mean, God. I mean, because if you're out there, I mean, I, it, well, it happened to me even with this TikTok thing I started doing. I was like, I've learned enough of this stuff. I mean, you know, it's just like I don't want to learn anything new, but I did, and I was like, I get it. And it was just so interesting because it took a while and took some effort, and also I'm like, I get this, and I think God's now saying I'm going to use this. It's twice as fun. It, what does? It's twice as fun. I love that. Yeah. I love that, Steve. Not to mention nobody's telling you. You can't talk about Jesus. They are not saying that. No, nope. yeah. I love that. We're and shadow know, banned. And, and when you were in that process, too, I mean, because a lot of people right now, some people haven't worked for a year, maybe five months, maybe eight months. Did you feel like, okay, there's there's got to be an open door for me. There's got to be a place God wants me. I started, like when I first got the job there, no. I was still... That was bad boy, Steve. I was still like, woohoo, kid in the candy shop. Yeah. But as I moved on, I, I started working uh, in a corporate gym. I got a managerial job at 24 Hour Fitness. I was a manager there for their, their fitness department. And it was just, the money was good. Yeah. Being, a, I mean, the tips were great. I, I was, the girls had a really good rapport with me because I wasn't, I had already started my journey to Jesus. Mm, yeah. So I wasn't. Well, I like that journey to Jesus. So I wasn't like the other gentlemen that worked there. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, cool. I was very workable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just, it just, I didn't understand it. Mm. I seriously didn't understand it. And years later, I'm like, oh. You're going to use this talent for me. Yes. Yeah, and I think the key too, like what you said about bumper cars, because I think that's what happens sometimes people get stuck. But you just kept moving. Like you kept trying, you kept going until you got somewhere. It went from might have being, been a strip club, but you got somewhere, right? Yeah. It, it went from being stubborn <laughs> yeah, to trusting. Awesome. And yeah. it, it's a difference. Stubborn was me constantly with my fist balled up trying to fight. Mm. Trusting was me opening my hands going, what next, God? It, it, bingo. I, t I tell people it's the equivalent of riding a bus. I'm no longer driving the bus. I'm sitting there. I'm pushing the button going, hey, this is my stop. And I drive <laughs> past my stop. And I'm like, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Got a better place for me to get off. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. So if you're out there, trusting is the key. Amen. It is. Take us back to it, and we got a picture here, and I love this. And I, I, I you know, when when you're on the show here at lunch break, you put yourself at uh, risk of me pulling some pictures up. I love this one on your uh, Facebook of you born, and you had some. You, hey, you were born for bodybuilding, Steve. I you was born a Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, do we have that picture up, guys? And it, and it's one of you um, a little later. I mean, that tell little- us about you being young, and then they got another one. I love this one with um, you guys, and you're saying Steve now and. Steve Steve at 100 because you're planning on going on. Yes. I, I'll tell you about that little fat kid right there. And I, please, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> My mother literally put hot sauce to keep me from trying to get breast milk. No way. And she said I would look at her crazy <laughs> and then go right back in. Like, <laughs> so you're a natural for weightlifting, huh? You were like, you were, you were born with an appetite. Uh, I always had a fascination with muscle. Uh-huh. As a child, I read Conan black and white comic books. Uh-huh. And I was... Wow fascinated then my aunt became a bodybuilder oh really yes I my aunt that. she's uh god i should have brought sent you some pictures of my aunt stephanie she's 70 phenomenal linda murray built oh wow very wow. much like linda murray so there was the fascination there but one of the weird things i do like a lot of people i i, I if you ever notice i have a huge shoe collection oh I'm, i i got this i'm this i have the same dysfunction each one of my shoes represents somebody i've helped Really? Because... Oh, that's a good little... I, I like that. Because I was never given help. Zero. Like I told you, my aunt was a professional bodybuilder back then. She knew I wanted to lift. And then, please don't forgive me, Steph. I don't... No, 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 no <laughs> nothing towards you. But, hey, Steve, lift this way. Do this, do this, do this. Meal plan this way, this way, with this way. And we'll transition into that as we go. But legitimately, I wanted to help everybody. And it went from giving people free plans because people don't respect free... Mm-hmm. free they're going, hey, I charge a pair of Nikes. Wow. I love that, Steve. We got two young guys out here right now that you help, right, guys? Yeah, they, they bought some Nikes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Steve. You know, it, it's funny, the industry we go, we, 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 we share the love in, um, you and I. Um, talk about your business. We got a couple pictures. Roll through the uh, pictures of Steve's business. Um, one thing that I always talk about, Steve, do they, do they hear me when the pictures are up, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. On, I'll talk over the pictures. One thing that um, I always say, and and um, and I've told you this, Steve. You, you know, and and you're probably one of the only people that I trust with other people. I've told you that before, haven't and I? When I opened, I never wanted to forget. Like you said, the young men in the audience, they're spending, they're hard on merch. Yes, they are. I don't want to misguide them. I never want to forget what it's like to be on the other side. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So integrity is a huge part. And that's why I'm really glad that I have a family business. So I, it's Great. we're all family. The the family's Christian. They're God fearing. Yeah. So I met your dad. Great man. <laughs> yeah, he's an amazing man. And so you're gonna hear about Jesus when you see him. Amen. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so, so it's it's really easy to keep that integrity part of the business. You know, they're they. My mother understands. My father understands. And the next generation that's going that's to take great. over understands. We're all about integrity. It's so funny when you talk about young athletes. People never know, and I used to tell my mom and dad, they don't know how close to homeless I was. You know, when I wasn't getting paid a dime to bodybuilding, I made tremendous money in bodybuilding. But I know how to make um, tomato soup. You ask for hot water and the ketchup bottle and then some cream. When you really? can make, oh yeah, I've had to eat a lot of um, no, uh, um, t- tuna. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, when you're a young, broke bodybuilder trying to keep some muscle on, you're looking for eight. calories. You're just looking for calories. Oh, wow. So, so, but, but what I love about your business, Steve, and, I, and, and that's the man who you are. I, I, I can tell young people, go see Steve over at Sports Standards, uh, Sport Landers. Thank you. He's not going to steer you in the wrong direction. And I think that's a, a, a problem we have in the world today, or, or, or especially with young athletes, is they're always looking for the quick fix, Steve. How many times it's like they look Magic at you pill. and they go, I don't want to work out for an hour, but I want to take a pill and work out for 20 minutes. And you're like, well, it doesn't work that way. This body was created with three-hour workouts. Yep. It just, mm. it, 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 and heavy weights. Not lightweight? There is no quick way to no. it. You can take something and gain it a lot fast, but the breaks happen. Yeah. Well, you and I cut our teeth on powerlifting. I tell people as I'm 60 now, and they'll look at me, and I carry a little a higher degree of muscle mass than most 63-year-olds. I go, it's the stuff I did when I was 18 through 
25. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it was, you know, you and I share the, the thought of this body is not just for show, but it's for go. Wow. You had, what was it, 1,500. If you couldn't have a 1,500 total, <laughs> yeah. just walk out the door. <laughs> yes. Just walk out the door. You, you, you had you to mean have a 1,500, like pounds. bench press, squat. Yes, yeah. you had to have a 1,500-pound total. If you were, especially if you were anything past the light Mount heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> once you got over, once you hit about two twenty, and you couldn't, uh, hey man, just, just come come into lunch break when nobody's around. So <laughs> lunch breaks the show. <laughs> so so it's true. I mean, it's 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 the time and effort you put in. But but wow. when young kids come in, I mean, that's something you, you, you I do know that you don't steal kids the wrong way, and that's why I feel comfortable telling people if you're going to do this and you're going to do something, go talk to Steve at Sportslander. You can't beat time under tension. That's how you grow. No. Nope. So if somebody was going to look for your store, like. What kind of stuff could you help them with if they're because you know springs come in, New Year's is come in. How could you help those kind of people as they start up their plans for the new year? We have been lumped because of me as a bodybuilding powerlifting store. It's not the case. I was a corporate fitness manager. Wow. I have helped elderly to youth, youth athletes. As a matter of fact, I have two youth athletes right now that I help out there, and. I can, God, I hate using the word I. Let me rephrase that. We can help you from simply living better, feeling better, losing weight, you name it. That's right. something that, I'm going to say I again. I've specialized in it. Yeah. I really hate saying I. I hate being yeah. I. But, but you know, it's true because I do believe God partners with human beings. Yes. So I think, you know, that's what I love about our show here at um, uh, Lunch Break. It's about the person's journey. Oh, that, I, 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 would you say, I'm thinking, there's a lady that I helped come down from 300 plus pounds, and Whoa. she got down to, I believe, 168 uh, pounds. It, so it, it's, it's... That's a whole person It's she lost. great. <laughs> this thing's... It's, I love fitness. I yeah. had a fitness badge when I was a Boy Scout. That's how long I <laughs> I love that, Steve. That's great. Well, you know what it is, and you tell people this, because you take a sedentary person that doesn't do anything, and you lose something like that, how much better is that than taking a top-level athlete and just let him reach another, you know, hardware, or trophy, or a medal? I mean, you have the two different, you know, um, 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 opposites. And that sedentary person, man, does it help their life? Helps their fitness, helps their health, and helps their longevity to be around loved ones. I remember I had an NFL lineman. He was, and it's funny, he was 300 plus, and he said, "Steve, I want to be 210." I go, "No, you don't." He goes, "Oh, I want to be 200 pounds." I go, "No, nah, no, you don't." I said, you're a big man and you're looking to pick good people out your way. I said, the moment you weigh 200 pounds at six foot five, nobody's moving for anymore. <laughs> and I told him 240. We got down to 250 and he looked at me, slapped me on the back and said, hey man, thank you very much. And he was happy about it. Yes. That. Yeah, because yes. there is an unhealthy weight loss mm -hmm. you can do too. You can push it too far and lose strength. You can lose your, your health actually. The best thing about coaching, and I use the word coaching, is I remember we'll talk about my first show, I guess, a little bit later. Um, human nature is... Well, just, just let's, hey, let's go into it right now. The next picture. Here he is. Yep. That little boy right there survived on five cans of tuna and a green apple. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately, awesome. five a, cans of tuna. That's a young Steve right there. Yes. Yeah, that's your first show. I don't know what happened. I got ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that gentleman, I, I remember I walked into, uh, and this is where I say human nature is to go too hard. Uh -huh. We go too hard. It's the first thing we do is we're too hard on ourselves. It's easier to have coaching. I walked up to one of my friends, God rest his soul, I'm not gonna throw him under the bus, and I showed him my diet plan, and it was a stellar diet plan. And he looked at me and said, you're eating, you're eating too much and walked away. Okay, and? So I, you remember the Weeder magazines back in the day? I used to be in the Weeder <laughs> and lie, and they, they lie to everybody. It was so much misinformation. Oh. Uh, and you read these champions that said they survived on tuna cans and Twinkies. Let's <laughs> well, eat tuna there. <laughs> one yeah. time, Steve, I, I shared my experience of going to Arnold's apartment. And, you know, I was struggling because I was under contract. And I, um, I, I was, champion protein was wanting me to get sponsored. I had a problem because I was under contract with Weeder. So I went to Arnold's apartment and he goes, he goes, yeah, I want a milkshake. And I go, oh, yeah, it's protein. And he goes, yeah. So he got it out and he got a... Uh, bottle, a, can, a, a can of Champion. I go, you take Champion protein? He goes, yeah. I go, well, I get weeder stuff like every week. 
And he goes, ah, Tom, come here. I come over and I opened up the cabinet below and it was full of weeder product. And he goes, I keep all the crap down here. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that on the air. Maybe I'm going to get in trouble there. <laughs> but, it's I mean, it's, all right. but, but it's my story. I mean, it's like it is. And I was like, holy smokes, you know? And um, <laughs> yeah, the misinformation oh. is crazy. Like I said, I, when people, you don't understand, five cans, like not big cans, little cans. I was doing three hour workouts and three hours of cardio a day on top of a thousand sit ups. Whew. I wish I could go back in time and go, hey, look here, man, here's a plan. Yeah. That dude would have been great. Yes. Yeah. I love it. And the second picture, is that um, the, um, how far was that into your career after that? That was towards the end. Um, that was the, is that either the cow or, yeah, I think that's the cow because that looks like a, that looks like a, a, a muscle contest uh, picture. Yep. Yeah. That's a, you're definitely on stage there. That's a good shot. That guy right there, I had a fallout with a coach. Uh -huh. um, we were planning on walking on stage at 265. Mm. And uh, God, I looked phenomenal. But I had a fallout about four weeks out. And I uh, won't even go into it. Oh, I've, we, we, Steve, you, we've all had those because, you know, they're not always for us. Yeah, it was just a weird situation. I, I, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but I just think it was a weird situation where he was stressed. He probably and, had another athlete, too. And he took it out on me. Oh, no, it, he, he was just, I think he was just stressed that day, uh, and he took uh, it out on me. And once again, I fell back to myself and I went right back to over dieting and mm. overworking. Mm -hmm. And I ended up walking on the stage at 249, mm. almost 20 pounds lighter than the goal was to be there. I was depleted, under dieted, did not carb up, didn't water right. Oh, I mean, yeah. like the picture, I'm like, wow, that looks great. But 20 more pounds of muscle, <laughs> that would have been awesome. I would have. Oh, well, yeah. I used to, I used to argue with my coaches all the time because I really liked myself about two twenty two. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I, I just I, I loved myself there, and everybody was always like, you know, and I just yeah. So wow. it does when you don't own yourself, you're committed to other people. <laughs> you are. Yes. Yeah. So then we go on to family. Yeah, that's the one thing I liked about Steve with you is like you were able to keep your family intact as you were competing. I lost my family when I competed. And uh, I, I, I just, I, I see that, you know, as you, as you, your people are around you. you know. That, that picture right there was another fallout with a coach. Oh. Ah, there was another fallout with a coach. And you said you have fallouts with coaches. It was just weird. I asked my family, I love them to death. Yep. I, I knew that. And, that, and, the, and it's, a, it's a support structure. People need support structure. The funniest thing, I always yeah. tell people, in this sport of bodybuilding, your number one enemy is your family. It, it's, yeah. <laughs> and they don't mean to do it. My mother, a hundred times out of a hundred on a Sunday, will never call me. But let me tell her tomorrow, I'm getting a competition. My phone would ring, and I will get an invitation for a bazooki. <laughs> well, let's go get something. Mom, I'm on a diet. <laughs> Never <laughs> fails. Yeah. Never. It's so true. Yeah, my wife's awesome. She totally um, is the one who pushes me out the door to go on my bike and go on runs and all that stuff. She knows the benefits when I yeah. come back. So she's like, go to the gym. Go on a bike, right? <laughs> He's a sponsored athlete. <laughs> oh, but, biking. Uh, you yeah. don't have a choice. <laughs> well, I do, but she knows that, like, I need that in my life. I need the athleticism, you know? Balance and, is the key in a yeah, relationship. Yeah. And then we've got another picture. Um, and this is, um, you said you're a grandfather. Now that blows me away because. I'm three. You're, you're a young man. I, yeah. My daughter, <laughs> my daughter apparently forgot the part where I said, hey, enjoy your 20s. <laughs> yeah. She, I'm proud of her. She's, uh, she's a nurse. She's graduated from nursing school. I'm very proud of her. Uh -huh. Um, she That's went through great. a she went through a really rough divorce and uh, life has been a little and she's starting to find her way. I'm really yeah. proud of her. That's but awesome. it's all about the next generation. And I've had other businesses, and one of the things that bothered me, I remember thinking in another business, how do I leave this to mine? Mm -hmm. And I felt guilty for that thought. That business didn't pan out for me. Now I have this one where it's my family. I have if my nephew, that's the dude. Yeah. <laughs> Is going to take over. I love uh, that. I, I can't wait for him to. T he's watched me shoot all these videos. He's got his own YouTube channel. It's really cool. It. If you want to see some fun videos, this guy does have mm -hmm. some fun videos on um, the website. And it, it'll be hard to find the. Uh, the go to the TikTok Sportlander West Case, uh, underscore Casey. TikTok is. I'm not shadow banned. Uh -huh. I'm shadow banned on Instagram and Facebook for talking about Jesus, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> and we went from having two, three thousand views to five. <laughs> Bam, it where, where'd it go 
And then I love it because you got a fur baby. <laughs> I have two fur babies. Fur, now. oh my dog. gosh. That right there is the princess. She <laughs> is a quasi rescue. Is she wearing a cape? Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> oh, man. Steve loves it. You have no idea. This one right here will sit between my legs. Wow. That's, that's daddy's it's little baby. That's daddy's little girl right there. And <laughs> she knows it. Um, so like I said, she's a quasi rescue. Um, she's from Casey Frenchies. And uh, she had a really rough. Uh, a little rough pregnancy, her lap pregnancy, uh. and uh, he gave her to me because he knew I would love her. That's awesome. And uh, she's that is Daddy's baby right uh, there. I love that. And then we have the new one, Rumble, who's uh, actually Anthony Rumble's dog. Oh, really? And I'm I'm puppy sitting him. That that's my little piggy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And then we got the next picture because I I love the sometimes looking at your Facebook page. Because you guys always have matching outfits, or you're doing a pose, and she's sitting on your shoulders. We are that couple, that annoying couple. We are it, but <laughs> no, it's not annoying. Oh, I love. She um. You take. She care. came into. She came into my life. Uh, she's brought balance. Yeah. That's one thing I can say. She's brought balance, and she's helped me overcome. Everybody, we as I'm 50. There's a lot of toxic baggage that has come along with being 50, <laughs> and. The cool thing is I'm very much, God, I'm very close to God now. So being with her has taught me like, hey, buddy, you make a lot of mistakes. I always tell my mom, every common denom denominator in my failed relationships, yes. this dude. I can't blame the world. It's, it's the hardest one to look at. This huh? dude, it's, yeah. <laughs> okay, it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. It, there's one person that's in the every corner of these that over. didn't work. You could do some counseling, brother. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I so love even it. though I no, love you, myself. No, you could counsel others because uh, that's the same thing. Uh, yeah. I love myself. I think I'm the greatest thing since sliced cheese, but I am doing something wrong. Yeah. And it, she's allowed me because she has such a great personality. We laugh. I love to laugh. I hate not having somebody. Oh, that's me. I got to laugh at everything I do. We pick on each other all day long, share memes, tag each other in stories. And I, I like having a companion that I can laugh with. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Nothing, nothing that, there. And she's learning her spiritual walk. She's starting to, to find Jesus. I love it. I love it. Good. So, so what, Steve, how we would sum things up? Because I, I love your life journey. If you got something to um, tell the audience or share with them, you know, do you have a life quote or a verse or, or a mantra? I mean, I know your mantra is that your, your song, but, you know, um, anything you want to leave the audience with? Trust Jesus. Oh. I, I mean, it can be no simpler than that. Trust Jesus. Um, like when I, I don't get a little long one here. When I tore my pec, I was actually quietly training to bench 600 as a 48-year-old. Mm -hmm. That was the goal. Steve, isn't, no, some of these youngins will know it, but getting old for us, 600 pounds? It's, it just, it's hard, isn't it? I, I went in, I, I go in the gym this morning, Steve, and I go to the machines. I mean, I just look at the free weights, I'm like, e goodbye. <laughs> Think I, I'm glad for whoever even been at hammer strength. I know it still gives me a chance to put a plate on there and feel a little ego yeah. without feeling the pain of my joints going nah, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and all That's the funny. older guys try to tell you and I don't do that. They told they always would tell me, hey, there's a there there's a time. Yes. enjoy it. And I, nah, I'm gonna live 500 forever. <laughs> <laughs> and so we tell all the youngins, be careful, be yeah. careful. Yeah. I like it. Well, Steve, you've been an amazing guest. Thank you. Thank you guys very much for having me. Oh, man, I love it. Adrian, thank you so much. We do want to thank Encourage Media Production and Seth Parker, Mike Harvey, Taylor and Tessa Touchstone for all the work that they do. Yes. And uh, so you want to tell people about our guest next week? So we have a very special guest named Kerry Ryan. You may know him as the owner of Action Sports, but he actually holds world records. Yes, he does. He has trained the teams that holds the world record. Um, he sponsors me. He sponsored Marco Ballo, who holds the world record for the 24-hour race, for the race across America, race across the West. So those are all like 3,000-mile races, and um, he'll be here. Yes, we're going to have him next week on lunch break. Yeah. So we want to thank our guest, Steve Southers, Adrian, for guest hosting today. And I want to just tell everybody, thank you for tuning in. Take care. See you next week. God bless.